Hey everyone, my name is Alex. I'm an ex medical student who sold all his belongings in 2012 to travel around the world. 50 countries, and the adventure continues. So we saw this cool looking bridge, and yeah, you guessed it. Drone time! Guys, we crashed a drone. That's right, I did. Oh man, it's another day in paradise. And today we have this. If you can see it, it's actually stuck right there. Look at that. So I was flying it over the bridge over there, and GPS signal, there's nothing here, so it wasn't very good. So I crashed over there. All right, how we're gonna get it? It's gonna be interesting. The easy part's crashing it, the hard part's getting it back. Oh man. What to do, what to do with me, man. I always pick the hardest part to drone while driving a motorcycle. So when you drone and fly a motorcycle at the same time, this is what happens. All right, well that wasn't too bad, but uh, it was kind of sketchy. So we lost one blade and I actually hit the tree so it's like bleeding from the sap, which is pretty crazy. I thought it was like oil or something. I'm gonna try to figure out what the damage is, but... Ah, uh, man, I hate these moments because you realize, you know, it's really expensive to replace and fix. Do it all for the shot, all for you guys, you know? So, all right, let's see what the damage is. This is certainly Che Guevara town. <laughs> what a weird and funky little place. Today we've driven for like five, six hours and we've only gone barely a hundred kilometers. Oh my gosh, it's like a monument to this guy here. Oh, here it is, Che Guevara. You might remember him from all the t-shirts that you see people wear when they want like change or, or uh, you know, when there's something political happening, people love to wear his face. And it's a very uh, misunderstood representation of what he actually did. So if you really want to find out what he did and how he did it and how he became famous or infamous, uh, be sure to Google it, check it out. Make sure to research it because when you wear that shirt, uh, the meaning behind it's really kind of altered and changed throughout the years. And the, this town is so weird though, check it out. It's like some music going on. It's a little centerpiece here, it's just, uh, I don't know what, 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 quite what to think about it. Oh, 
Okay, so here's a history about this place here for Che Guevara, which is the revolutionary leader, which you usually associate with Cuba and so forth. Uh, so basically, this is where he was held for about a day in this building here. Uh, but basically, he was trying to establish a guerrilla camp around this area, so he just kind of went back and forth. He had a few people come by, uh, the kind of point where the arm, the Bolivian army actually found him, where they eventually killed him. The copter came by, they grabbed his body, and they took it out. He was conspiring with the Communist Party here in Bolivia. So, uh, there's a lot of history and a lot of things to read up on, so make sure you do that. Other than that, very interesting. You gotta ask yourself why you chose this place. Uh, well, Bolivia is actually centrally located in South America, so the idea was to be able to distribute himself and his guerrillas and his philosophies and the whole deal uh, through all of these bordering countries. So it was a geographic strategy, is what it was. Estaba de seis años. Pero los vi ellos cuando cuando venían de allá del sur, venían este con sus mochilas grandes, venían así este de de dos en dos, así de distancia de diez, de quince metros. All right, so after a crazy day of like six hours of driving, only making 100 kilometers, we are now at this really crazy and amazing hostel. It's really, really nice. It's really cute. It's really quaint. And there's an awesome sunset, as you can see behind me. And what's even more interesting about these places is that there's a French couple that owns this place. There's a French person that owns a place next to it. And there's like a other foreigner that owns it over there. So I had no idea this was like the French connection going on over here. She's lived here for like 14 years. Her friend is from Belgium who is now living here for six years. So it's really crazy how this place just kind of like grabs you and keeps you here. <laughs> Gotta be careful because Leandro uh, is actually very motivated by this place. So he may stick behind. We got awesome parking for the motorcycles you see behind me. Pretty great. That's the street. This is the young... Oh, you come to Amos otra vez? Inti. This is Inti. He is the son of the of the couple that actually owns this. So he speaks Spanish and French. Oui. Oui. <laughs> and for 35 Bolivians, it is not a bad deal. Here we have the room. All this stuff goes on very nicely here to the left. And we got dorms. So not bad. <laughs> ¿Y cuántos niños hay en tu clase? Diez. Wow. Taking a class.